Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. I'm your host. I am Bookish Stitcher on Ravelry and on Instagram. So let's get started today. I am having a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys are. It normally here, I live in San Antonio, and um, normally it's it's been high 90s, low 100s for months here. And um, yesterday, Friday evening, Saturday morning, a cooler weather front came in and it dropped. The temperature dropped by over 20 degrees, almost 30. And um, so Saturday morning, it was 60 degrees outside. And it was amazing. I went out in a t-shirt and shorts. And I was just out on the back uh, chair and chair in the backyard, drinking coffee and knitting and soaking up the cooler weather. And then um, we all put on hand knits. Even though it's not that cold, um, I'm one of those like, oh, I have to wear hand knits every chance I get. So we opened up all the windows and my daughter had her little hand spun hat on and um, all the rest of us had um, knitting on. My son uh, should never move north because he was freezing at 60 degrees. He had on two jackets and slippers and fleece pants and it, it was pretty funny. I would love to move north so that I could wear my knitting more, but my son couldn't handle it. So anyways, that's been really making me want to knit a lot, the cooler temperatures. So I've gotten a lot done. Um, my finished object this week is the Spring Garden Tea by, and I still have sent to weave in the ends, but um, the Spring Garden Tea by Alana Dacos. Um, she's never not knitting on Ravelry. And this is for my daughter, and uh, she already tried it on, and it fits perfectly. Um, I made the three T size, hoping that it would fit her for a while longer, but it fits uh, perfect now. And I even added a little length, but it's it's not going to be wearable for too much, for as long as I would like. So I should have added even a little more length. Um, the yarn is Debbie Bliss. This really pretty pinky mauve colorway. And so I'm excited. My daughter really likes it. Um, I tried to get a picture of her. Uh, in it to show you guys, but toddlers don't really want to, well at least my toddler doesn't want to sit still for pictures. So that's my finished object. And then I have a half done object. Um, the Starry Night Socks. This is the first one. And um, the second one has been started. It's residing since the cooler weather came out. I wanted to get this bag out. This is a Tangerine Designs bag. And look, it's, I, I love owls. Um, the owls are wearing little earmuffs and hats and scarves. It's adorable. There's a little logo. But the other sock is in here, and I'm just on the cuff, so that's not even really worth showing. But um, So you may remember last week I was saying that these socks were for my mom as a Christmas present. And if they were still going to be for my mom, they would probably not be done right now. But they're now for me. And... Um, my mom came over last Friday to hang out with the kids and just kind of say hi. And uh, I showed her the sock that I was knitting for her because I just wanted to kind of see what she thought. It, she knows, she, I mean, she's fine with not being surprised. She, she asks for socks every single year. And so I showed it to her and she was like, those are for me? Yes. She goes, but I wear a size 11 shoe. She's a size 11 shoe. And I said, I know, I'll just make it longer in the front. She's like, but how am I going to get my foot in there? And she also likes her socks, almost like house socks, pretty roomy. She's on her feet all day. Uh, she works with, she's a nurse with hospice, and so her feet kind of swell. And she has circulatory problems and stuff like that. Um, so she tried them on and we couldn't, they were really tight. And I wear a size seven, seven and a half sock. And uh, so they're now for me. But I, and I felt really bad because I wanted them to be for her, and I wasn't going to rip it out. I had already turned the heel and gotten into the foot. It was a lot of work to rip it out, and she was okay with that, even though she really thought they were pretty. So she and I and uh, some friends are going to take a trip to a kind of local yarn store. It's a little bit farther away, and uh, I'm going to let her pick out any skein of sock yarn that she wants there and make her up some. I don't know if they'll be done by Christmas, but so she can have some for her because I know she wants those and I'll probably try to make her some house socks too because those will be I can do those quickly before Christmas so that's the story of 
the Starry Night Sock, which is now for me. My second work in, pro uh, work in progress is for my son. It's for his birthday, which is coming up really soon in October. And I showed you guys the Susan Claudino uh, Wild Rumpus kit that I got. I'm making the little creature monster for him for his birthday from the kit. And I have two feet, an arm, an arm, and a pajama booty flap. Isn't that cute? I, I think it's really cute. And this design is genius. Um, when I first looked at the pattern and saw all the, I was like, that's going to be a lot of little in, little things to sew on. But the way she does it is, there's not a whole bunch of seaming and stuff. It's, it's seamless. And I, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm definitely going to, I was going and looking at her other designs, like, which ones do I want to make? Because now I really want to make some of the others because I know how easy it is. But I just have, uh, like, the ears to make and the horns and then the head and the body. So that should be done really soon. And I'm really enjoying it. I've just been doing like one thing a week, like an arm a week, a day, like an arm a day, a leg a day, just that kind of thing. And um, then my snowbird, which I've been working on for forever, graduated this week to my giant bird leg bag. And it's kind of, it's a, a ground poe raven. It's really cool. It's huge. And um, because the fat squirrel bag that I had in that I really love, it's really cute, was way too small for it now. And I think this bag should last it through the remainder of the project. But I worked on this hours and hours this week. And I don't know if you'll be able to see much progress, but I put in a little marker so you can see. Okay, so I knit from here to here. So... I think it's like 12 centimeters, so a few inches. And I still have another eight or 10 centimeters to go before the pockets, and then I do pockets, and then you do more. But good thing is that the sleeves are already done. So once I'm done with the body, it's done. I just have to seam it up. Oh, this is in the uh, Knit Pick City Tweed DK, and the colorway is Enchanted. and. I'm really liking it. It's soft and I think I'll love it when it's done and can wear it when the weather finally cools off. It's going to get hotter again. It kind of did a little Texas does teases. It's like cold front, cold front, go back to 90s and it does this repeatedly for a month or two. I, I feel like it does that. But, uh, oh and I forgot to say on the little wild thing monster, the yarn on that is Highland Handmaids in a colorway done for the kit that I got. So those are my works in progress this week. Let me get some tea. Mm. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I just really love owls. And um, it's just so cute. And I'm trying out a new tea that I also got this weekend. We, I don't know where all this place is located. But um, we have near us a place called World Market, and basically it is it's just things from all over the world. Food, teas, drinks, candies, um, soaps, everything like that. And I got a new tea there, and I'm really liking it. It tastes really good. It's um, high calf teas, and this is the caramel black colorway. Or color. This is your, no. Um, this is the, the high calf one. And it's really good. I'm really liking it. And uh, it's supposed to be, you know, give you a lot of energy. Oh, it, it has more than coffee. That's good to know. It has like, it says normal black tea has 50 milligrams. Coffee has 100. This has 123. So that's, that's awesome. Keep me going for the rest of the day for my other crafting that I want to do. But so now on to spinning. I have an almost finished spinning thing. This is that color I showed you guys a long time or a couple weeks ago. It's knitting color and um, it was their mini bats. And this is the grape one of that. And I am on the very last little bit of the last little mini bat. And this is my first ever full bobbin on a drop spindle. And I'm really excited. The funny thing about this, I finally got it to where I can just 
draft and spin, which is awesome. And that was something I'd never achieved before. But I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'3", so it doesn't drop and spin for very long. It, it kind of, you know, by the time I get a rhythm to it, it's, it's already almost to the floor. And somebody told me that I could stand on a chair, but I don't know if I'm that skilled yet. I think it might have problems, like with back spinning and stuff like that. So that's that. And that leads into my enabling. Because those bats have, I think, 1.3 or 1.4 ounces. Um, they're the knitting color ones. I wanted to ply it with, like, a complementary color from another yarn or from another fiber so that I could get more yardage out of the plied. Because if I just did that, then I wouldn't get that much yardage. So I got this on Etsy. I did quite a bit of shopping around on Etsy to try to find exactly what I wanted. Um, I wanted something that was just white with hints of other colors. And so I got this, and I've never heard of this uh, fiber company before, ever. Maybe you guys have, but I hadn't. Um, it is Yarn Shine Fiber Arts, and these are their Rolex. And this colorway, I don't remember what it's called. Oh, she also gave me a little sample. Cool. I kind of had just left this in the bag till uh, talking to you guys. And the, here's her business card. Oh, it's called Icicles. And it's three ounces. Yarn Shine. And it's on Etsy, and I'll link everything in the show notes on Ravelry. The show notes will all be on the Ravelry group. And uh, that's, I guess I can just tell you guys about that now. We have a group on Ravelry, and um, we're doing a fall knit along in there right now. Anything fall, um, hats, mittens, socks, scarves, sweaters, anything you want. Or you could do a washcloth in fall colors. And um, that runs from September through October. And at the end of that, we're going to have some drawings for some really great prizes. And so that's that. And it has, the fibers are um, super fine merino, silk, tussa silk, and bamboo, firestar, and star bright. And so that is going to be spun next and then applied that. And there's enough of this to also use with those other knitting color little bumps that I was showing you that have, and I think those will be really pretty because it's um, black and blue and I think that'll go really pretty with this. Um, so that's that. Move that over there. So um, along with that fiber, I also got some other fiber Because I, I have a lot of yarn, but I'm planning on getting a spinning wheel really soon for Christmas. But I don't have a lot of spinning stuff at all. So I'm on the lookout for whenever there's a good sale from a dyer that I like. And I got two braids recently from Nitty and Color. And I'll probably talk a lot about her stuff because I really like her stuff. I actually met her at my very first retreat, SSK. And... It was the first, I met her on the first day, and I'm a little bit of an introvert. I, I can be really shy when I first meet people, and it was the first day, and I didn't know anybody at the retreat, and I was just feeling so overwhelmed, and it was in the nighttime, and I looked around at the tables, and I was looking for anybody I recognized, and I saw somebody who I recognized, They're, they were a dyer, and um, it was Sadie, who dies for Knitter's Nightmare Yarns. And so I just went up to the table and I was like, can I sit here? And um, Sadie was there, um, Bella Socks, Knitting in Color, Gail's Art, and um, another crafty girl. Was like, I sat at the table with all these awesome dyers and really sweet people. And I didn't know it because I didn't know what any of them looked like except for Sadie. But so uh, the dyer for Knitting in Color was there and she was really, really sweet and nice and talked to me on when I was feeling kind of nervous. And that kind of just stuck with me, that she was just really nice. So I will always rave and love her stuff just because she was so nice to me when, in a time when I was really nervous and needed somebody to be nice, you know? Those things stick with you when somebody's nice to you, when you're feeling nervous or whatever. But, <laughs> okay. This is some of her fiber that she had on clearance. My husband loves this. He's like, can that be something for me? And I said, no. I'm going to get him some, but... Uh, 
I want this one. This is the Slip Flops color, and it is merino. And I got this because it's going to be another easy spin. Um, I need fibers starting out that are just very easy to work with and don't uh, have too many things in them for when I first start with my wheel. There's her business card, and I'll link everything with that. And when I was getting the easy to spin fiber, another one may have fallen into my cart. And my husband loves this one too. He, ah, uh, this is called log. And this, see, it's gray, but I don't know if you can. Yep, yeah, there's. It's purple, and it's just so so gorgeous. She really does amazing stuff. I, I just can't say that enough. And she's a nice person, so if you ever want to check out a new fiber dyer, or you probably already know of her, but her stuff is amazing. And this is actually a 50-50 uh, merino tinsel blend. And so that I'll be saving till I'm a little bit more experienced with um, spinning. Okay, so I had a couple other things I wanted to talk about just with the Ravelry group. Um, I am going to be doing a pattern giveaway in the Ravelry group. Uh, I'll put it up today, and then I'll draw for it next Saturday. My One of my local Knitting Night friends, um, who's really sweet and really funny, um, is Susanna, and she's Zuz Zuzu Seuss, I think that's how you say it, on Ravelry. And um, she designs different shawls, and I think she's done, or she's, she has done a couple garments, like uh, for um, Twist Collective, I know she did a sweater. But uh, she did a shawl for the Harry Potter magazine and different ones like that. She has an Autumn uh, Mystery KAL going on right now, and I got in uh, early enough when it was free. For people, you know, that got, in, um, that got in early, I think it was end of August was the cutoff. But... It started, and she just released clue number one, and I looked at the spoilers, because I, I love spoilers. And it's gorgeous, you guys. It's so pretty. And I haven't done a lot of lace shawls, and I haven't done any beading, but, the, but you know, she's local to me, so at night, if I have a problem, I can go and be like, hey, what am I doing? I messed up. And she's so sweet that she will help you. And it doesn't bug her when you're like, I messed up. She's just, she's really nice. And she's really good at explaining things in a way that makes sense. And so I'm going to cast that on hopefully today. But since I got the pattern for free, I wanted to gift one to you guys. So if any of you guys are watching this and see it before next uh, Saturday, if you like knitting lace shawls, if you like Zuzu Seuss patterns, and if you like beading, I mean, it's not... It's not really easy, so you need to know kind of how to do yarn overs and lace knitting. It's, it's not going to be really hard lace, but you need to know how to knit lace. Um, but so if anybody wants to do that, I've never done a mystery knit along, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm going to try to get through the clue. And I think she's releasing them every two weeks. I'm not 100% sure about that. But it's going to go through autumn, so it's going to go for a little while. So if or when whoever wins the pattern for next weekend, they will have time to catch up and stuff like that. So that's what we'll do with that. And um, you can just go and enter in the Ravelry group, the Bookish Stitcher podcast on Ravelry. Um, for the pattern. And I hope everybody, uh, that lots of people enter for that because she's a great designer and she's really sweet. And her patterns are beautiful. And she's really good about uh, helping people. She's very active on Ravelry. Um, but she, she, you know, she gets thousands and thousands of posts from people, so she has a lot she has to reply to. Okay, so the book for this week is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's a book on Nikola Tesla. And I, I love Tesla. Um, I first heard about him, you know, at School of History stuff. And he also was in that book that I talked about, Eiffel's Tower, a while ago. He was in that very briefly. But the book this week is a book just about Tesla. Well, let's see. Wizard, The Life and Times of Nikola Tesla. And it's by Mark J. Schaefer, Schaefer. And it's a biography of a genius. 
And I did the audiobook of this, um, and it was read by Simon Preble, and that was really good too. But uh, it comes in uh, hardback or paperback or hardback, I think, and you can also get it as an audiobook. But it deals with Tesla's childhood. He was a, he was from Serbia. Well, he's from it's now modern day Croatia, but uh, he was born there, and it deals with just how he was gifted from a very young age and how he you know, wanted to go into school to learn about all these things and how people funded him through school and helped him kind of get the start there and then how he moved to um, America. And when he first moved to America, he was working for a little while with Thomas Edison. And that wasn't the best relationship. Edison was very, he was, he was very smart, but he was also a very good businessman. I would say almost that he was a better businessman than, than like a genius. Like Tesla, he was more of a genius and not a businessman at all, and that's kind of the tragedy of Tesla's story. But he worked for Edison for a little while and kind of got you know his feelers out there with that. And he came up, Tesla came up with the um, AC conductor motor, and he also did a lot of stuff with now what we would see as like future things for the internet. But he, you know, he just did a whole bunch of things with that. And he also um, worked for Westinghouse. That was a, another place where he really worked at. And he was a bit of a showman. He liked to do stuff with currents and running through him. And that's kind of what he's known for almost, that he was like this mad scientist. And uh, he had, you know, he's one of those, when you come across people that are just really, really smart, you often find that... <laughs> They are a little eccentric, and he was really eccentric, and I love that about him. He, he kind of had a problem with, he was very, like, things to be clean, and the book talks a little bit about that, and uh, just the things that he wanted to invent. He would always, he would always get so, ex in the book, he's so excited about what he had envisioned in his mind, and what he was inventing at the time, and he would go and try to find backers, financial backers for this, and he would just talk to them and be like, this is going to be great. Do you, you want to sponsor this? And at first people did, but as with a lot of, you know, geniuses, things took longer. He would go in different, you know, directions with his work. And he soon, it soon became where people didn't want to back him. And he had trouble getting his patents and people would steal his work. I mean, that's just the real tragedy of the Tesla story is he was very trusting when he shouldn't have been. And he was not business savvy at all. He had really no idea what he was doing with most of that stuff and patents were lost and he lost a ton of money that he could have made just because he wasn't business smart and because people took advantage of him. And a lot of his really great life work was not even credited to him until recently, I think. But back when he, he died basically penniless in a hotel with nothing for him, to show for it and it's just so tragic to me and this book it, it's just amazing and I really recommend it and now it does say the life and times so it's not it is mostly about Tesla but there are different bits of historical things that are happening along the way so that to me was interesting too because it helps you to kind of get in the mind frame of the period and what all is going on during this time and I will probably go back. I don't often go back and, sorry, it's some more tea. I do not often reread. There are so many books out there that I want to read that it has to be something special for me to reread it. And I intend to go back and listen to this one again because it has so much information that I just feel that I would learn something new every single time. And it's just such a great book. So I really, really recommend this. If you have any interest at all in this time period, in this subject of inventors, or if you have any interest in Tesla, uh, it's great. And it's again, Wizard Life and Times of Nikola Tesla by Mark J. Schieffer. And um, that's the podcast for this week. Don't forget to go and join the Bookish Stitcher group on Ravelry and enter for a chance to win uh, the pattern by Zuzu Seuss, Susanna, um, for her autumn mystery cow. And I hope you guys have an awesome week and you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye guys.
Yeah. <laughs>